So I'm going to start this tier list by putting GoldenEye64 in F tier, which I'm going to rename Coolant Play Tier, because my dad didn't let me play this game. Hi, I'm Linkerd, and today I'm going to be reviewing games that I played when I was between 3 and 10 years old, so they're roughly in chronological order, and it's based on my raw experience with the games at the time, as well as the memories I have uh, with them. So I'm going to be telling stories about my childhood as well, but just because a game is an A tier or S tier it doesn't necessarily mean it's good and obviously uh, just because a game is in a low tier or in D tier it doesn't mean it's bad. Also if you have experiences or stories about any of these games or you disagree with any of my rankings don't hesitate to let me know down in the comments. So we're gonna start with N64 games because this console was my dad's console and none of these games are were mine but they were the first ones that I played and the first ones I had experiences with. We're gonna start with with Super Mario 64 so obviously a big game when it comes to uh, th early 3d games and this unsurprisingly is gonna go in S tier I must have been like four years old when I played it and I didn't do much at first when I was in the game I, I would run in the courtyard I took a while before I came inside the castle I even realized I could do that but uh, this was the first one of the first games that I played and I had a lot of fun with it I never finished it though I got pretty late in the game but I don't think I got to the last boss actually that's a lie I think I did finish it I didn't even realize I did the next game that I'm gonna rank is Zelda Ocarina of Time and this is also a high S tier um, higher than Super Mario 64 for me unsurprisingly as well but this unlike Super Mario 64 which is more arcadey is like this grand adventure uh, fun fact, I actually didn't get past the Deku tree for a long time because what happens is the first dungeon of the game is like this giant tree that has like a spider in it that you need to kill which is the final boss of the dungeon and I was like four years old so picture this like four year old who sits on his parents bed turns on the console starts playing the game and then like you get to the first dungeon and you get to the first boss and when I got to Goma the first boss this giant spider scared me so much that I would jump every single time I would jump up and press the reset button or turn off the console every single time I did this dozens of time before I was even able to kill the boss for a long time and mind you my playtime when I was little was 30 minutes only on weekends so I didn't have a whole lot of opportunity to play this game so anytime I would play I would turn on the console get to Goma the first boss and then turn off the console and do that over again so yeah <laughs> uh, next game is F1 World Grand Prix and I'm I'm gonna put this at low S tier after the two first games. This game surprisingly aged really well. I looked at some YouTube videos of gameplay and it looks good even today but the thing about this game at the time the early 2000s is that it was a really good racing game especially if you had someone to play with. I would play this with my sister and I think with other members of my family, I think maybe with my dad sometimes, and it was always a blast. I'm not really a huge F1 game enjoyer, but I have really fond memories of playing this, trying to beat high scores, and especially of playing this uh, with my sister. And that's a lot of S tier, so to balance it out, I'm gonna rate Top Gear Rally, and this is gonna be the first D tier of the video. I just couldn't get into this game. I tried playing it, uh, maybe it's because it, it was rally game maybe it was because it wasn't a really good game but the controls didn't make sense to me and it annoyed me and I didn't like it all right so then we're gonna go to PlayStation 2 games PlayStation 2 was a console that was owned by my dad again but these were the first games that were mine so some of these games uh, keep in mind I was like five years old and I started to play games that were my own so it plays a lot into the ranking of those games and we're gonna start with chicken little and chicken little is gonna be a high a tier so this is the first game where I think you can imagine that it's not necessarily a really good game but again whether or not it's a good game doesn't really play in the ranking uh, it's whether I had a good time with it or not uh, and chicken little was pretty okay for a game to be played by a five-year-old it had like these normal level collect-a-thon sections and it had these mini games it was like a dodgeball mini game mini games where you get uh, chased around and so it offered some uh, diversity of gameplay but ultimately it 
got kind of boring after a while and I never finished the game, but I had a good time and for that I'm gonna give it A tier. Next is Gang des Requins, Shark Tales, as you might guess. This is gonna be B tier and I'm hesitating to putting it in C tier. We're gonna say B tier and this is gonna be low B tier because this game I actually didn't get far. I think I didn't get farther than the third level and fun fact, one day we tried to beat the third level which was a rhythm game and we spent an hour which for like a six year old was a long time we spent an hour with my dad my mom my sister trying to beat it and we could not beat it so when i give this game b tier or c tier it's in the context of me playing the first and second level like over and over and over again and on top of this i, I watch gameplay there's almost none online but i watch gameplay and it doesn't look that good it really wasn't a great game and it was really boring for me low b tier next is arthur and emini which are which is arthur and the invisibles not a really well known movie in the us at all i don't think but pretty well known in france i think and this is is gonna be I'm hesitating it's either high A tier or low S tier and for now I think I'm gonna give it low S tier this is definitely not a great game uh, I played it on my Steam Deck recently on an emulator and here's the thing this was really entertaining and like other games on this list I didn't figure out you could save for a long time and so after having trouble figuring out how to start the game I had trouble figuring out that you can like save your game and continue playing for a while but after I was able to save my game I was able to get pretty far in this game it used like a fighting system between three characters and you could switch between them even playing it last year when I tried the first fight I almost died so it oscillates between boring the puzzles were not that great and pretty fun when it comes to fights but ultimately this is gonna be a low tier I'm not doing a great job describing it but this game was actually pretty fun for young me but it was way too hard the last level was way too hard for like a, a six-year-old to finish like let alone me right now so imagine a six-year-old I couldn't finish it next is a Spongebob game La Créature du Crabe Croustillant uh, Krusty Crab's Creature I'm gonna put this uh, at a uh, mid S tier I have actually a little history with this game I wanted it for Christmas okay and I think my sister didn't really care and we, we had a, a thing where we said, okay, if one of us get it, uh, both of us can play it, you know, it's like both of our game. But I wanted it, I really wanted it, and I told my parents I really wanted it, uh, if I remember correctly, and my sister actually got it during Christmas, and I remember when she got it, she was like, no, it's mine, you can't play it, and I was devastated. Um, if uh, she watches this video and I get something wrong in the story, she can uh, say it in the comments, <laughs> so make sure to scroll down and see her response to this allegation but I was able she was kind enough to to let me play it and this game freaked me out man it looked scary and so it looked really cool I have this really good memory of the art style and the gameplay was fun but like the first racing level freaked me out so much that like I played through it a couple times but like after a while I stopped uh, so this is a mid S tier because I really enjoyed it but it freaked me out man okay uh, Crash Bash so this was a hand-me-down from my aunt, I believe, and I'm gonna put this at high A tier. And the reason for this is this is basically a collection of mini games. It's not like a normal Crash Bandicoot game. And I played it recently on my Steam Deck and it's fun, but it gets repetitive. And as when I was little, I could feel this repetitiveness. Uh, it didn't grab my attention too much, but I played enough of it where it was fun. I had a good memory of it and it had multiplayer. And I think I played this with my younger sister and it was really fun so i'm putting this at a uh, high a tier next is jungle book groove party and this nah, this is gonna be a d tier <sighs> It's in front of Top Gear Rally, but not by much. This is a rhythm game that uses the, the D-pad, the, the arrows. And I like rhythm games, but this one is just not that great. I played through a bunch of levels, uh, but uh, I remember just seven, six-year-old me was just not having it. And so surprisingly, this Dora game, Dora on the purple planet, sur la planète violette, I'm actually gonna put at a low A tier, higher than Shark Tales. And the reason for that is this is like a baby game. This 
this was my little sister's game and it's very easy you just basically walk in a straight line but it had a little bit of a simplistic story and honestly maybe it's because I played it with my sister uh, or with my sister watching or I watched her play and I played the same levels over and over again but regardless I still enjoyed my time with it because of those memories and I have great memories with this game so I'm sure if I played it today it would be like F tier but no I'm gonna put it at A tier banger honestly <laughs> and next is gonna be I toy play and I toy play mm, is gonna be mid A tier just right in front of Dora I played this game once or twice I think my grandparents had it the same grandparents who I got this and this from and they had a PS2 at their house with the little camera, the eye toy. And there was this game where I remember one game where if you moved around, you could hit ninjas that were coming at you. And you just had to basically like wave your arms around in front of the camera. For the time, it was really impressive stuff. You know, after that, the Kinect came and kind of killed the momentum that like camera based games had. But this was really good stuff at the time. And so I had a good memory of playing this with my grandparents which they never played any other video game so I'm putting this at A tier and Grand Theft Auto Vice City I'm gonna put at low S tier and the reason it's low S tier is I didn't play enough for me to justify putting it higher than other games but I remember playing this with my sister and my cousin just a couple times we didn't play the story all we did was just spawn in tanks and helicopters I don't know if that was a thing but we just spawned in that stuff and it was fun and that's it and we had a good time of looking stuff online to like have the codes and trying to figure out how to type the codes and so for this reason I'm putting it uh, low S tier and so the last series of games that we're gonna rank was a Nintendo DS I think I got this when I was eight years old the, these were my first games that I owned on the console that I owned so just keep that in mind for context uh, these were mine like all of this were mine a lot of them I had to share with my sister obviously I had to let her play a bunch of these games but this was basically my console and my games so just for context first game I don't know if this was the exact first game that I got on the DS I think it was New Super Mario Bros and I have to rate this really high I have to put this here really high S tier because man was this good these games kind of gave me the taste for what video games could be and got me used to video games so I can't take that away from them but New Super Mario Bros was really fun the game wasn't too hard if you play it today like it's really not that hard you can finish it in an afternoon but it really got me into platformers but it also had excellent mini games which are recycled from Super Mario 64 maybe it's the other way around I don't know but it also has really good multiplayer I remember playing this with my sister and the multiplayer was competitive it was fun you have to collect coins and like harass the other players so they don't get coin and like jump on them so they lose their their coin or stars actually not coin really Really fun really good stuff phantom hourglass I'm gonna put a uh, mid S tier again right next to um, Super Mario Bros uh, this game is not remembered as a good Zelda game and I know I played this when I was like eight years old but I think it's underrated this game is really fun uh, it's like a lesser version of Wind Waker but I have good memories with it it also has multiplayer which was fun but as we're gonna see spirit tracks multiplayer was better but the main thing with this is the story I finished this game obviously unlike a lot of other games but the story was really good and I remember at a certain point in the story there's like a ghost chip and it freaked me out it really really freaked me out and I was really scared with this ship and I know a lot of people are freaked out by stuff in Zelda Ocarina of Time but apart from Goma I wasn't really scared by this game this game Phantom Hourglass did freak me out so it, get, it gets points for that but other than that it's just a really good game Pokemon Heart Gold I'm gonna put it at this <sighs> I don't know. I'm going to put it right here. And the reason for that is not for the game itself. If it was for the game itself, I would actually rate it probably here. No, the reason why this is so high in S tier is because with Heart Gold, you got a little Pokeball. And what this Pokeball did is incredible. It was this pedometer where you could take your DS and put a Pokemon that you caught. Keep in mind, this is like 2009, 2008. A Pokemon that you caught on this little 
pedometer pokeball and then you put it in your pocket and you go to like your first second third fourth grade classes and by walking around each step you take gives xp to that pokemon do you understand how cool it was as eight year old me to take pokemons that we caught to school come back home and they leveled up that was incredible and i think this was actually my sister's game but i have memories of putting the little pedometer thing in my pocket and I have memories of playing this with friends and like watching them play and playing I really like the crocodile Pokemon so you know I'm not a fan of Pokemon games but this one also had like Olympic games and like casino games if you got bored of grinding Pokemon so this gets a high place on the tier list uh, but also because of the pedometer thing and I'm gonna put Mario Kart DS actually right above or below I actually don't know I'm gonna put this above Mario Kart DS and actually move down Pokemon Hard Gold in retrospect. Mario Kart DS was so good. Uh, obviously, I played this with my sister. Uh, the co-op was incredible. The multiplayer was great. I didn't like the mini games. I looked at some retrospectives online of people that played this game. They say the mini games were great. I don't understand it. I didn't like them that much. But I have a good time uh, remembering, uh, especially trying to get the smallest time possible on some tracks and like getting so quick that I unlocked the Nintendo ghosts. I don't know if that's what they were, but they were ghosts with Japanese names and really getting really proud being like oh i'm so fast that like i'm racing against not my ghost but nintendo ghost so yeah that's really fun but other than that it's a great game a great multiplayer so this is high on the list what's not high on the list is this goddamn game oh my god i actually think i'm gonna put this after no you know what that's not fair i'm gonna put this high d tier there's no c tier i'm gonna put this at c tier this is like the ultimate c tier game asterix if you don't know is a french comic book character Character. and this film I think was made like this was not a good film and this is like a movie licensed game so you can imagine the quality of this it's exactly what you think it sucks it was a collection of mini games where you needed to rub your stylus side to side up and down in a circle blowing the mic sometimes and you just got equipment that allowed you to do the same mini games but you had to play harder to be able to even do them it wasn't that great I this like I'm hesitating to put it in D tier but since this was the only game I had for a while and I basically played it I couldn't finish it but I still played it I'm gonna put it at C tier what's not C tier is Spirit Tracks and I think I'm gonna put this a little higher than Phantom Hourglass because it had good multiplayer in Phantom Hourglass you had a boat and stuff in Spirit Tracks you were more restricted and so I dislike this a little bit more in Spirit Tracks but the thing about this game is the combat was good the story was great I actually, well, I was a huge fan of one of the villains that had a cool metallic arm. I love this guy. He actually turned good in the story after a while. But Spirit Tracks, I had a good memory of it. And it had good multiplayer, kind of like Super Mario Bros. I think the multiplayer, you needed to collect Triforces. And again, as I said in this video a lot, I played this with my sister and I had good memories of it. And I really enjoyed this game. So I'm putting it at pretty high C S tier. And what's going to go in S tier as well is going to be Anno 1701 and I'm gonna put it right here if you don't know what the Anno games are they're kind of like the Civ games in this game you played as the settler who comes to the new world the Americas and you had to make a settlement and you had to control taxes and build certain buildings and there were threats pirates would come and you had to repel them and it's actually a pretty good game for a DS game this is a good Civ type game and so I'm putting it in S tier but this is actually a game you might have fun with if you're into DS games and into city building games. This game is not S tier though. Ratatouille. I'm gonna put this at low B tier and the reason for that is no nah, I have to no nah, I don't have good memories of this game I have to put it at a high C tier I I don't know no nah, I let's put it in low B okay so this game had a bunch of different mini games you could do some cooking you had levels where you play it as uh, the rats and you like ran round levels but ultimately like this was as I've said in uh, for other games this was a game that I had and it was the only one I had for a while and I had to play 
played a bunch uh, before I got a new game, but it was so boring. I really don't have a good memory of it. But if I didn't put it in low B tier, there would be no games in B tier. And there's a difference between these two because this one actually had gameplay. This one barely had any. So I'm going to put this at low B tier. And another game that I don't know where I need to put, it's either B or A, is Narnia Chapter 2 The Caspian Prince. So this is a movie license game. But the thing with this one is it actually tries to do things. So I'm going to put it in low A. And there's a good reason for this and a good reason for uh, why it doesn't go in B tier. It's not that great. It gets boring, but it's very short, so it doesn't last longer than it should. You basically play different characters and you have different mini games for every character and like whether or not you succeed in the mini games uh, affects how many points of attack you like attack uh, the enemies with. This game was mid but it had good ideas and when it finished I was like huh it could have been a little longer but I'm not mad because it wasn't that great. And the last game that I'm gonna put here this one actually wasn't mine. Alexandra Letterman. I'm gonna put this in low B tier higher than Asterix aux Jeux Olympiques. And why that is, is this game, I'm actually not sure if the game I'm thinking of is this exact game. I remember my sister having this horse game because she really liked horseback riding at the time. And I remember it being so boring. It was like an on rails game kind of where every day you did different things. You like cleaned your horse and stuff, but you didn't have any liberty for what to do. You had activities, you did them and then that's it. But I played this this game a lot and I just remember thinking like this isn't fun but I still played it a lot and for that reason I kind of have good memories of it and just <laughs> just playing it and being like what the hell that I'm gonna put it at low B tier so if you know any of these games or have any stories about any of these games please let me know in the comments but I hope this video was entertaining and I'll see you later